Good morning, everyone. Happy Easter to you. It's awesome. Good to have all of you. For those who are visiting, my name is Father Anthony Le. I welcome you on behalf of St. Joseph family. Uh, we're about to start this great holy day. I would like to ask you, if you don't mind, turn to the one next to you and say, Happy Easter, and share our prayer intention as we together unite and offer to God. Yeah. Thank you. Hello everyone, there are a lot of people. If you happen to have a couple extra spaces at your pew, can you raise your hand so that our people could come over? See, you can see uh, if our people raise their hands, let's go over. Thank you.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with you. My dear brothers and sisters, what a great day to gather and celebrate the risen Lord. He has conquered death. He has resurrected and given life to you and to me. Last night, we have a great privilege to welcome seven of our brothers and sisters baptized here, received fully into the faith. Two more brothers and sisters, let's together acknowledge our Lord is a great God, God of mercy. We now call to mind our sins and we ask Him for His mercy. I confess to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life.
let us pray. O God, who on this day through your only begotten Son have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, God and forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible not to all the people but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sin through his name. The word of the Lord. Stra 
struck with power, the Lord's right hand is exalted. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that a little yeast leavens all the dough? Clear out the old yeast so that you may become a fresh batch of dough inasmuch as you are unleavened. For our Paschal Lamb, Christ, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast, not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. The word of the Lord. Christians keep Pascali Lao days, Emul and Christiani, on whose lady meet of us, Christus innocent patri, reconciliabit, peccatores. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after them, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple went also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture, that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. At St. Joseph, we have a great tradition. Every Easter morning, the local people would come together and participate in a donkey ride. This pastor, Father Anthony, he loves it. So this year, there is a special donkey. This donkey understands when you say, stop going to stop. If you say, Alleluia, it's going to walk. The more you say, the faster it goes. So the pastor was very happy, and he auctioned it for $1,000. So he got on it. Alleluia, the donkey starts moving. Alleluia, he's happy with the speed. So keep saying, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. So he keep running and running, and the people on the side, hey, stop pastor stop stop because in front of him there was a cliff so afraid and fearing for his life and he says stop 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 and the donkey stops right there and the pastor look at the donkey and look up to heaven and say hallelujah <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you go here to St. Joseph you know that I tell this story every year but every year I chain the animal so last year was a horse, but this year's donkey. I just wanted to bring a little bit of craziness and silliness to this Easter Sunday. Isn't that crazy for you and for me? 2,000 years later, and we believe in the resurrection of the body? Isn't that crazy for us? We believe in the men who say, I am the Son of God. I shall die for you and shall rise again conquer death and bring about a life to you and to me. Isn't that crazy for Christianity proclaiming to an entire known world we believe in the crucified one? Just like Peter today in the first reading. He's going nuts. He's going crazy. He's going about and say, the one that you guys crucify is actually the Lord of heaven and earth, the one that we've been waiting for, the Messiah. Thanks to him and his death, you receive forgiveness and eternal life. Those who believe in him shall have eternal life. Our Lord did not die for himself. Our Lord did not rise again from the dead for his own good. He say it loud and clear. He say it, he died so that you and I could live. He rise so that you and I know the face of the Father, know that 
the world has been invaded, not with power and strength, but with the presence of God. At the moment of incarnation, the Lord took on human flesh. He entered human life, invading you and I, invading the life of human family, created world with his own presence. If sins and darkness of sin scatter and suffocate you and me and make us scared of dying, we realize the good Lord has entered into our life and once again made a bold promise. So let us together reflect upon this great day, the day when Mary Magdalene came to the tomb, discover the empty tomb, discover the body of our Lord is no longer there, discover he may have made his promise true to Peter three times together with his disciples. I shall be crucified, and yet I shall rise again. St. Paul once said, if this faith in the resurrection is not true, you and I, we are most pitiful people of all. Our faith anchors on this promise, on this truth. Our faith anchors on the fact that our Lord actually died and rose again from the death. Take a look at this moment. And what I'd like to ask you, only possible to believe in this mystery of our Lord's resurrection if we could believe in those early witnesses. Peter, for example, he was afraid. He was denying Jesus three times at least a few days ago. He walked away, returned to his former way of life, and yet he encountered the Lord on the seashore when our Lord appeared to him, and then our Lord talked to him, and then our Lord ate with him. The pattern of divine manifestation first appear just like the Lord appeared to Moses in the burning bush. He appeared to them, allowed them to come close, allowed them to feel his presence. And then he spoke to Moses, just like he spoke to the prophets. Now with Peter, the Lord spoke to them, appeared to them in the human form. And then finally, to prove to Peter that he's no longer just like a human flesh, body and blood like before. He ate with them on the seashore, but yet he can also appear to them in a locked room. Something so new, some, something so radical. He's not a ghost. It's not just a mystical experience that they had with Jesus. Something new. He's no longer restricted by time and space. He's no longer restricted by what you and I are defined by, time and space, history. Something new just ushered into this great life. Peter understood that. Peter realized that the good Lord, he did not go too far away. He made the promise, I shall be with you to the end. Only then the dimension of new life has been ushered into this amazing world. Peter acknowledged the fact that the good Lord now with him, the good Lord now active in the world in a way that never been done before. He now present to them in a way so close, so close, that he does not have to be visible to them. He just have to be permeating them with his very spirit. He just have to be transforming the bread and wine on the altar into his very body and blood. He just have to move the hearts and soul and bodies of those who are discerning. He has to do so in such a way, gentle, kind, inviting, non-threatening. If you were here last night, you would witness seven brothers and sisters receive baptism. Each one of them came to that conclusion that they believe in God. They're going to accept that moment of becoming his daughter, his son, and brothers and sisters in the church. They have been moved by the Spirit of God. They have been moved by the witnesses of the faith. You and I and this community, they have encountered people who show to the world that God is real. I don't know about you, but I heard a lot of confessions throughout the Holy Week, sitting in that confessional, hearing people 
from all walks of life, coming home. They've been moved by the mercy of God. They've been moved by the example of others. They're being moved by their very suffering and pain as consequences of their sins. They're being moved by the Spirit of God. Now, they broke into tears when the word of absolution being said to them, your sins are forgiven. Fascinating. So my brothers and sisters, it's not that crazy to believe the Lord of heaven and earth actually restore life back to you and to me. It's not crazy to believe that your life and my life have a lot of meaning, have a lot of purpose, has a lot of worth for God to die for us and rise again. It's not that crazy to believe that we belong to the Almighty Father, the maker of heaven and earth. It's not hard to believe that love is more powerful than death. It's not hard to believe that we are supposed to be living in harmony, in peace together. It's not that crazy to say, we believe in life and not death. It's not that hard to believe when thousands and thousands of years, when Christianity being persecuted left and right, millions of people being persecuted, but yet we faithfully say we believe in Christ who died for us, who rose again and restored our life. This life, temporarily, this life is transient. Yet we live this life with that knowledge we shall be with God. We shall transform this world according to his plan. Only then it makes sense for those people refuse to walk over the cross and accept death. Only then it makes sense for those Franciscans in the 1797 who came here and established this mission, willingly live with our brothers and sisters here, willingly suffer it's only then it makes sense for the Vietnamese martyrs to die because of their faith in Christ. That is the testimony paid by blood, life, so that you and I today dare to believe in this technological world, in this world of Twitter and Facebook and whatever that might be, artificial intelligence. We still believe in the divine intelligence. We divine, Lord, who has infused in our life, in your life, a divine life that we could begin to enjoy today. So don't be afraid to be crazy about Christ. Don't be afraid to be living out that faith. Don't be afraid to say alleluia to the entire world that the Lord is risen and He's in the control. Our Lord is with us today and forever. The empty tomb reminds us that death is not powerful, more powerful than life. The empty tomb reminds us that our Lord is no longer restricted by time and space. Our Lord has transcended everything, including our very broken life, very broken world. So my brothers and sisters, join me in saying, Alleluia! Yes, the Lord is risen. Hallelujah. Dear brothers and sisters, to the Paschal mystery we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounce Satan and his works and promise to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty show. I do. To you, believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I do. To you, believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death, and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. I do. To you, believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. And may Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and Holy Spirit, and bestow on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by His grace, in Christ our Lord, for eternal life. We shall draw water joyfully, singing joyfully, singing joyfully. We shall draw water joyfully from the wellsprings of salvation. Truly good is our salvation. We trust we shall not fear, for the Lord is our strength. Petition to Heavenly Father. For the whole church, reborn in the risen Lord, that we may continue to bear witness to the effect of the resurrection on our lives, giving us in the world joy, hope, and peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the risen Lord may move the hearts of all those who are in conflict with one another whether in wars between nations or grudges between neighbors, bringing peace and reconciliation among all God's pe people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to persevere in living our Catholic faith, especially through the fidelity to Sunday Mass and the sacraments. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are sick and those on our prayer list, that God will restore them back to good health, give them hope, and renew the strength of all those who are caring for them, especially for Marilyn Juarez, Leon Miranda Garcia, Monique Morset, and Tamara Link. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for those who have died, that the light of God's love may lead them into the joy of God's presence forever especially for Alan Boris, Virgo Lopez, Luis Martinez, and Dominic Remlinger. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for the repose of the souls of Dr. Will Wyman and Monsignor Fred Soka, and the intentions of Don and Yvonne Seco, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Together we pray to St. Joseph. Dear St. Joseph, faithful servant of God, 
and loving guardian of the Holy Family, we ask for your guidance and intercession so that we can faithfully worship God, courageously share our faith, and generously carry out works of mercy and charity. Help us become missionary disciples, always ready to share our time, talents, and treasure to further God's kingdom. Teach us to receive Jesus worthily and adore him in the Holy Eucharist with a humble and believing heart. O most loving Father Joseph, protect us from every contagion of sin and assist us in our struggle with the power of darkness. We humbly ask you to present our prayers to the Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for all his holy church. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Live our heart to hearts. We live our heart to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But on this day above all, to love you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restore our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the founder of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like a dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, enter willingly into his passion. He took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, 
the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread her throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Walk on them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints that please you to other ages, we may marry to be co-heirs in our life. May praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from me. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Behold the Lamb of God, 
Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. This is the faith of our church. We believe this is the body and blood of our Lord. For those of us who are Catholics in good conscience, you are welcome to receive him. For those of us who are here visiting or do not share the same faith, we respectfully ask you, please be seated praying for one another. Or if you would like to receive a blessing, please come forward with your hands crossed. Thank you.
Let us pray. Look upon your church, O Lord, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Congratulations to all who received their sacraments of initiation yesterday. A special thank you to our RCIA, RCIC teams, the liturgical team, and our music ministry who, whose hard work and dedication made the beautiful 30 celebration possible. 
We will continue to pray the Divine Mercy Novena after the 8 a.m. Mass in the Mission through Saturday, April the 6th. For Divine Mercy Sunday on April the 7th, we will pray the Chaplet of Divine Mercy after every Mass. You may quietly exit if you do not wish to participate. And seniors, save the date of April the 27th from 1 to 3 p.m. for the celebration of spring. We will have Holy Mass at 1 p.m. with catered light refreshments and fellowship to follow. As this is a catered event, reservations must be limited to 120, so please RSVP to the parish office. And don't forget to turn in your CRS rice bowl to the church or the school. And thank you so much for your generosity this Lent. And on Easter Sunday, we can respond to God's generosity with the same selfless giving as our Lord. An easy way to manage your church giving is to text and gift function that is fully integrated with our secure online giving. You can also text an amount by scanning the cards that are currently located on the back of your pews. Thank you. And save the date of June 8th and June 9th for our parish celebration of the 227th anniversary of our founding and the birth of our Catholic faith here in the East Bay. More details coming soon. And lastly, our annual Easter egg hunt will take place after the noon mass on the Dominican grass area behind the old mission church. All are welcome. For you parents with kids, you might want to come after noon mass around one o'clock. We have approximately about 5,000 eggs. There's gonna be a lot of eggs. And if you don't help me to get them all, they're going to hatch here. We don't know what to do with them. <laughs> we have enough turkeys already. They're roaming around every year. Crazy. I just wanted to give you a preview of what might happen in June 8th and June 9th, a 227-year anniversary. We're going to have a very beautiful, original statue of Holy Family in front of our church and also the mural in the back. What you see now is just a markup. The final painting is going to arrive sometime in the middle of May. June 8th and June 9th, we're going to have the artist himself here. I will bless it. He will go in to give a presentation of how beautiful, magnificent, original masterpiece look like. I invite you to come and join us the day that you don't want to miss. It's going to be a very, very wonderful festival in honor of St. Joseph and foundation of the mission. Once again, I want to thank you all those who serve at this Mass, our deacons, our MCs, our servers, our lectors, and all those who, who help out our ser ursers, or especially our choir. They have been prepared for so long for this day. So thank you very much, all of you, for the amazing work. And I wanted to thank all those who are here from afar. I know you're visiting the families and stop by here at St. Joseph. I thank you for your presence. Your presence is also a reminder that how God works calling us home together. This is your home. This is our home. The church is our family. And let's together receive our final blessing. The Lord be with you. And with your Bow down for the blessings. May Almighty God bless you. Through Easter's solemnity and in his compassion, defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten Son endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's Passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast come with Christ's help and exalting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God.